the story of Japan's transformation from an agricultural society to a modern industrial land of progress. Follow us as we take a look into the lives of the Japanese at this time. Throughout their history, the Japanese had conflicting ideas regarding foreigners. The Heian period stressed Chinese language and cultural traditions, and the Chinese were revered. However, when Tokugawa Ieyasu started his shogunate, pressure from Europeans forced him to limit all foreign influence, shutting Japan off to the world. For 250 years, Japan lived in isolation. It took the force of a new nation to open its doors. Greetings, I'm Commodore Matthew Perry from the United States Navy. President Mil Millard Fillmore recently sent me on a naval expedition to Japan to open a treaty agreement. The treaty was primarily for the purpose of diplomatic and trade relations. I arrived on July the 2nd here in Tokyo Bay in order to persuade the ruling shogunate. I did the reasonable thing. I brought huge ships and trained their cannons on the royal castle. The shogun relented, and I did not end up having to use actual force to acquire the agreement. Unfortunately, the shogun finally signed the, my treaty on March 31st of the next year. Ugh, those American b****s forced me to trade with them. Now my people, angry at my international trade, are conspiring against the government. The samurai, who are used to their agricultural society, will have to be subdued and their wealth taken away. After this American example, major European countries decided that they wanted Japan's luxury resources and the benefits of its trade. They forced their way into Japan in the years following Perry's arrival. Well, that was a mess. At this point, Japan has had a weak agricultural base and the common people are starving. And when these foreign powers come along and forcibly made treaties with them, they weren't pleased. Eventually, this led to the discontent of the people and the overthrowing of the Tokugawa shogunate. In the aftermath of the people's discontent, the samurai rose up and overthrew the shogun, replacing him with a young, opportunistic man named Meiji. Emperor Meiji was ambitious and ruthless, and bent on destroying the centuries-old feudal system in Japan. It's time to catch up to the West. Once I gained power, I crushed the remaining forces of the shogun and issued an edict. Actually, I, Iwakura Tomomi, was largely responsible for that. I was key in the negotiations for recreating the treaties between Europeans and Japan. I also went on a two-year trip around the globe learning about industrialized technology that was then used to continue industrializing Japan. I also advocated for Japan's constitution and parliamentary system. I may be a puppet emperor, but I am crucial in creating a source of nationalistic pride the Japanese people can rally for, and the reformers can centralize around. I am also creating a conscripted army, allowing Japan to catch up militarily. The samurai will, will be no match for this new army. They don't have our advanced weapons or vast capital, and the training from European generals will make our forces unstoppable. At this point, Japan had set itself up for an economic explosion and much of this new technology would be transferred to the military, turning Japan into the only industrialized powerhouse of the East. Industrialization had many benefits for Japan. It boosted their economy, saw them advance their military, and created large cities and cultural centers. However, the feudal system disappeared as peasants moved to cities for factory jobs and samurai no longer had men to protect. Any resistance to Meiji's industry was crushed by his new army. So in the end, the samurai were destroyed by their own emperor. Meiji's dramatic change affected the life of the common man as well. The financial advisors, investors, and merchants who thrived on the new international trade were in full support. Our government realized that capitalism was amazing for advancing technology and bringing a nation power. They brought in foreign expertise to teach modern science and actively assisted private companies in numerous ways. They understood that innovation came from the people and started programs of nationwide education, 
allowing more and more people to contribute to an innovation. The field workers were less impressed. Industrialization in Japan was funded by their tax money and their cheap labor. Let's listen to a Japanese industrial era laborer. Do you not understand the awful conditions me and my family suffer through on a daily basis just to keep your progress going? So much change has happened in the past 30 years. Who do you think paid for it? We did. Our common people and the samurai. With our money and our crops. Still, some Japanese workers were adapting to life in the city quite nicely. Hey Tom. Hey Wong. What do you think of this new factory job? Uh, it's okay. The pay isn't great, but it's enough. Any uprisings we try to start are crushed by the Emperor's new army. Plus, labor unions are illegal, but it's nice to have the new railroads and steamboats for transportation of people and our food. We're probably better off in the long run. Yeah. I don't know, I just, I can't get over how horrible these city conditions are compared to our old farm homes. It's like those people the Englishman told us about, working in his home country. I guess that's the price of industry. I guess. Over the course of a century, Japan transformed itself from an isolated island to a beautiful industrial nation. It took the force of American and European guns to open Japan's doors, and the people's anger at the shogun to bring down the government. Emperor Meiji's reforms, though radical, ultimately gave Japan the factories, resources, and trade necessary for an industrialization never seen before in the East, and transformed their feudal society with samurai and daimyo into a modern society of worker and administrator. Through the hard work of the lowest classes, factory workers like Tom and Wong, and the expertise of European-trained investors, Japan built for itself a new transportation with railroads and steamboats, and a new infrastructure full of grand cities and unstoppable progress. Because of their industrialization, Japan became a major player on the world stage, and a better place for those that built it.